Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Welcome if you're currently here in the live chat. I appreciate it. Today, I'm going to do something different, okay? Aside from me sharing my face, talking, 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 I'm going to do a little bit of a narration today looking at a number of different photos of Dylan's place of living, his farm, and other areas of interest. Now, you might have seen things like that before, but what I'm going to do is a before and after, sharing with you the latest shots of the area. Now, you might have had pancakes coming in at some point, but I'm talking about photos and footage after pancakes visit, so it's more up to date, okay? I'm gonna be taking a look at Dylan's farm, his grain shed, the pond, waterhole, swamp area, from the looks of it, and Jim Brenner's burnt down trailer to see if anything was moved around, taken away for investigation, you know, stuff like that. Because who knows, with changes to the environment that can occur, the people are coming and going, whether it be authority or rogue individuals for whatever reason, we might be able to see something when comparing. So, as we go along, you can share your thoughts, opinions, and talk about a range of stuff, okay? Because this video might be, you know, uh, fairly short compared to previous videos, we've been in a, a live premiere format, I'll add a little bit of overtime at the end, so there's enough time for people to finish off discussing things, talking about stuff, okay? So you don't get abruptly cut off, right? So, Let's get into the photos right now. So to start things off, this photo is at the pond, the waterhole area. It was taken by some guy. Credit to Salty Pancakes for reposting it on his channel in the community section. The original photographer is credited there, okay? Just to give you an idea, a perspective of where this specifically is, if it's new to you, let's just go over to Google Earth and I can explain. From the aerial view, this is where Lucin Pond is in this area. Correct me if I'm wrong for whatever reason, but I've seen the markers and I've seen people constantly refer to this location. Okay, so this area, what you see on screen is that photo of that swamp-like area I showed you just a couple of seconds ago. All right. Now, when you look here, it is 2019 imaging this. It does appear pretty dry. You see the vegetation, but it's hard to see like the water, but maybe it's covered by the trees. Maybe it was dried up slightly, but it's very greenish in this area, as you can see. And there is some kind of like fencing going around. I don't know if you can quite see it. Do you know that like brownish line? that goes all the way up next to that vehicle there. It's a fencing around it, okay? And um, just a brief little ref uh, reference, okay? I know this is 2019, does anyone have an idea whose vehicle that is? I mean, would it be, it doesn't look like Dylan's at all. Could it be another farmer? Is it Don Hatley's vehicle, possibly? I'm not sure. Maybe they were just visiting to get some water, maybe, or just to have a walk around. Who knows? I've only just picked up on it now, so it's just kind of interesting to see some kind of activity. But you get an idea. This is what it looks like from a bird's eye view. Okay? In terms of the distance, just very roughly from there to where should we say? roughly speaking, two miles from the grain shed to the waterhole, two miles. From um, Dylan's farm, if I can find it, give me a second. Go all the way down there. Well, oh, where's it gone now? There we go. Here. 
about 7.3 miles from Dylan's place of living, his farm, all the way to the waterhole, okay, where the pond is. Let's return back to the photo. Now, an additional point to throw in, it was Ty and Lance, towards the start, quite a few months ago now, who actually visited Lucin Pond, you know, looking for Dylan, because maybe he was submerged in the water, he was hidden underneath. Uh, they didn't find anything at the time, but this screenshot of the place gives you an idea of what it looked like back then, okay? And we can switch and change between the two so you get an idea. I don't know if it's the same exact spot as where the other person took the photo. It's not the same angle either, but you get the idea of the place. It's not massive, but it's big enough if you were to hide someone, though the depth doesn't seem deep enough. And from what Candice Cooley has said in a recent interview, the pond just isn't deep and people have been in. I can explain a little bit more of that shortly. But... When looking at the appearance of the place, it just looks like a standard pond, okay? Did you call it algae? I don't know if you call it algae. You've got the green stuff on top, the surface layer. You've got, you got bits of vegetation plants growing within. I don't know if there's any frogs in there, newts, um, or those underwater snails, anything like that. I, mean, I don't know. Um, there's like a, the odd few post in there, wooden ones, I'm not sure what that's for, um, can't see any tents, nothing like that, I don't know if people would camp out around this area, then again, thinking back to what I've previously seen, it is possible, you never know. You have a few trees, you know, collapsing, well, that's probably just with age, the actual quality of the water doesn't look so bad considering why it is a pond, but yeah, let me just switch to the most recent photo. So this is Before by Lance Kelly from Earthworm Entertainment. And this is a more recent one. I don't know the exact date of when it was taken, but, you know, when you do compare the two together, at least, they do appear different. Now, aside from the lighting, because that's down to, like, the weather and uh, if the sun was out or not, or the clouds were present, as were in this one by Lance. When you look at it, they do virtually look the same. I mean, the water itself, there's more reflection here. You can see the trees reflected. Whereas when you look here, you can still see kind of a reflection, but it's covered more by the algae and vegetation and stuff there. Um... The trees here look relatively healthy. I mean, you probably get the odd few dead ones nearby. I don't want to zoom in too much because it'll kick me off the gallery. <laughs> but hopefully you can make it out clear enough. You know, you've got a tree there with a the branch overhanging, so it provides a bit of shading, especially when the sun's out and it's warm. I can imagine maybe quite a few flies hang out here. Yeah, you get swampy area. I mean, sometimes I know people do look for flies gathering if there might be some kind of body, remains of an animal. You know, that type of thing. I mean, you got to take it into consideration when it comes to an area like this, though, because there might be for other reasons, um, like where I am. If you go to like near a pond area or something, you might get mosquitoes and flies like that, which could bite you, so they can be a bit of an annoyance. Um, do you anything I can, well, not me relate to, but from, well, I guess what I've seen previously, okay? Kind of off the topic, but I'll just mention it to you anyway. So you've got, you know, like a swamp area, a pond like this, you know, both of the same location, just different times taken throughout the months. But it kind of reminds me of the time, and it was a real finding. The other stuff was questionable. But um, there was a guy on a channel called Mind Seed TV. Do any of you know of him? He does paranormal videos. But on the odd occasion, he did unboxings from the dark web. 
and I believe he did one of them, whether it's genuine or not. He opened it up. It had clues, I think photos or coordinates with a weird creepy doll and bits of clothing, younger people, that type of stuff. And I can't remember where what state it was in. It was definitely in the US, maybe somewhere south. And it led to an abandoned trailer, which had dodgy, weird, um, you know, old tapes, which you'd put into an old TV, that type of thing. And they were found scattered about, hidden in the trailer. And nearby to the trailer, there was almost like a swampy area, or like a little pond area. And submerged within it was some kind of cow, I think. Uh, Livestock, but no longer alive, dead, rotting away the bones, the remains of all the flies gathering all around it. Kind of just remind me when I looked at this photo how you get these swamps which can look very creepy at times, especially if it's dark as well. Um, but yeah, I think that's enough of that photo. You get the idea. So that's before taken by Lance, and this one is supposedly after which was reposted by Salty Pancakes. Not too much going on, all in all, but I just wanted to share it to you. Different perspective. Um, visually, arguably clearer than previous footage, if you want to call it that. And as well, just to finalise on this location, I said Candice um, said in a recent interview that the police did go down here to explore and search whether it was literal divers or just the police diving in, it's not deep, the water, so you, you wouldn't be able to hide a body in a place like that because it, it would show. I mean, if it was chopped up or something, then maybe you could conceal it better. But, you know, the fact is police have been in this area and looked about and didn't find anything. Now... Because of what's been previously said about how the LE handles stuff, you could still argue, so what? Maybe the police did find something down there, but they didn't tell anyone. They're hiding it, they're being corrupt, or they're just withholding it from the family for now. You never know, because if they, if they can't be trusted, they've made lies already, and they've handled evidence poorly, you you know, you can't trust, you can't trust them. You've got to be very cautious. Um, I know Lance and Ty went down there, but they didn't get into the water. So even if they got there before the police did, um, they didn't go into it, so they wouldn't have seen anything themselves. They just looked from standing nearby, something like that, whereas the police got full on in. You can leave your thoughts down below what you think. Do you think the police did find something and the hiding, withholding information? Or is it just a literal uh, case closed with this area? Move on to the next. Let me know your thoughts. So moving on to the next one. This is yet another screenshot from the video by Earthworm Entertainment when out there exploring Jim Brenner's trailer for the first time, I believe. This shot this photo the video was all done before the police did that did their investigation okay can't remember the exact date or month when this happened it was like a month or two ago but the main thing is this location was originally Jim Brenner's place of living his trailer where he lived and this was in Montello but the outer skirts of it closer towards the border between Utah, Utah. So he's near to the mountains, okay? Not very, very, very close, but closer compared to the town of Montello where people live, okay? And obviously, when Lance did get there, burnt out, and that was done, the fire, accidentally, supposedly by Brenner, who left the hub turned on with gas canisters within, within the trailer, so it caused an explosion, Brenner wasn't present there at the time. I guess he was reckless and clumsy, so it led to a bad outcome. No one got hurt. This occurred two years ago, before Dylan went missing, okay? So um, you can leave your thoughts. If you've got any additional points you want to add on regarding this event, if you know of any 
additional information or stuff that's never been revealed before, feel free to list it down below if you want to. But visually speaking of the place, it's just like a graveyard in a sense, remains of the trailer. You look in the middle, the epicenter of where it all happened, it's burnt out, pure wreckage and carnage, some barrels scattered around, you hob stove, remains, we got these like gas or propane canisters still st um, still stood up. You got Lance over there. To the left, you have, I don't think you can go on it completely. On the left, that like square box is a chicken coop. No chickens left inside, but yeah. Um, somewhere near the chicken coop on the floor was a pair of crutches. No, not a pair, a crutch. I don't know about the other crutch. It looked like it was just one. Who knows whose it is? I know people have said Brenner had an injury in the past, hurt his ankle, but did that happen in 2019, the ankle injury, or later? In addition, if it was later, what was Brenner doing returning back to this area if it was burnt down and in uninhabitable? Also, the actual crutch itself was in decent condition compared to the rest of the stuff around which was blown up and it looked more new it wasn't rusted it was kind of shiny so it does make you think hmm whose is it and when did they last visit and why did they leave it behind those are some unanswered questions i hope they can be answered someday um as for the rest it's just like crates pallets bits of wood scrap metal all that type of stuff um I don't know if you can see it on this screen, but, um, hmm. well, this is like a different angle too, but, you know, it's just a complete mess. Now, let me show you up-to-date, up-to-date footage, okay, this one. So it looks completely different, first of all, because of the camera angle. I believe this was taken from the helicopter. Reference of who took this, it's a screenshot from Heavy D's most recent video on searching for Dylan Rounds. Heavy D, three months ago, did um, talk to Candice, interview her, and, you know, fly around the area three months ago. Okay, and I have some other shots to show you later on of the farm before and after too. Credits to Heavy D, okay. So you get the idea. And this screenshot was by Heavy D in most recent time, as I said, his most recent uh, part two video, searching for Dylan Rounds, cooperating with Lance and Ty, looking at the different mines and mine shafts, which are also available on Lance's channel, full length raw footage. Quite interesting to watch. Some of you will know because I've told you about it in some of the previous uh, live premieres. But that aside, this shot was taken when they, you know, flying over the area into Montello to reach Ty and Lance. So that's why they came across this trailer and documented it along the way. And it's interesting to share with you because one, it's decent quality, first of all. Two, it's zoomed out, but you get, an, you get a good look at the depth and the range of the area and the road behind that, which we can talk about in a second, okay? In addition, this photo was taken in recent time, meaning it's after the investigation by Elko County and slash all Box Elder County when they went down there eventually to search the area. Okay. Now, from what was previously said, the police presence down there at that time, which may have been a month ago or several weeks ago at least, they didn't find anything. Supposedly, they had all kinds of equipment out there, all the buggies, uh, the quad bikes, the search dogs, or the cad cadaver dogs. You would have seen it, that convoy in Lance's video at the time when they were parked up roadside, watching the convoy of them come down. So there's an extensive amount of resources, I guess... So they would have searched the area, maybe dug up the ground possibly to look for things, maybe used the radar system. And yet, despite that, 
when you look at this photo to you, does it appear as if it's been searched or not? I mean, I'm sure the police would have searched thoroughly. Well, maybe that's debatable as well, but when you look at this photo, most recent, does it appear like it's changed? Have things been removed or not? I mean, when you look at the outer skirt of the area, you can still make out there is like white objects and trash as you can see down there, maybe the odd rock and stuff. It doesn't look like they've been moved. I don't know if I can see any cones. You've got the yellow bucket down there, which I think had the bones in, uh, not human ones. You've got the odd like barrel and stuff going on. We've got a few more bushes and vegetation emerging compared to last time when uh, Lance was out there. Um, over here, is that the ash pit, I think? I think it is, because just there you got the lawnmower where Lance was walking past, and he documented it, and then just before it, or by the side of it, appears like um, an ash pit, a mound, where that little bit of clothing rag was found what Lance uh, looked at nearby. So that all looks the same. Um, you zoom on down here, you got the chicken coop still present. I don't know if the crutch is still there by the side, can't quite make it out from here. In terms of the gas canisters, which you see a couple of them, um, I'd say arguably they have, well, it might just be the angle of them. They, they appear to be standing up. More of them seem to be standing up compared to um, that image. Do you know how you see them, how they're scattered, spread out a little bit? You know, you've got one standing up and then the other four behind it are just flat on the side to the right. Whereas you compare that to that, and we zoom in, it appears to have been gathered together and they all seem to be standing up now. Now, most likely it's the police that were responsible for doing that, just gathering them into a pile maybe to analyse a photograph. Nothing too suspicious. So it shows that there's been a presence here in a way, at least proof of it visually, if uh, you didn't, if you weren't there at the time to witness the police and all the people there. Um, don't have the photos of the shovel and the ground. Um, I can't remember from what angle that was from, north, east, south, west. Um, so I can't really show you that. The actual trailer itself and the remains of it. I don't know. Um, hmm, does it look like there's objects missing from there? Bits of scrap, barrels, pans, anything like that. It looks pretty bland from that angle. Um, that there, that there, which I think is a quad bike, is still present in the Heavy D's photo, which is that there. Can you see in the middle of the screen? Okay. Um, I mean, when you look at it from the back, the back or the front of this side, there's not much on the ground. When you look here, there's a few bits of items and mesh and fencing, which looks like is no longer there. I might be wrong. And then on the other side where you've got that, that big barrel of some sort, that is that there if you can make it out in the middle of the screen. So, it looks like most of the stuff still remains, but there might be the odd few bits and bobs that are no longer present, which were probably taken away to be analysed, I guess. Now, what else is worth looking at? Well, the actual road itself. So, as we can see, the road bends round, and then you can park literally right up to the trailer. If you follow the road down, it bends, winds, 
and then it drops down, which you can't quite see down there. There's a bit of depth. It drops down, okay? And then it goes up that way, spirals back right, almost in and out, and then eventually, I think that's the road over that way. That like thin white line, the dirt road. Ah, there you go. And it goes back up there. It's like a snake, in a way. In and out, in and out. So you can kind of understand the concealment in the way if you're on ground level. Because if we refer back to 2019 quickly, I can show you what the trailer looked like in 2019 along with another important finding. When you do zoom in, in on Google Earth, you can see it emerge. And this is the trailer of Brenner's before it was burnt down. I'm aware quite a few people may have seen it by now, but to those who are new to my channel or new to the mystery, this is how it appears. This is what it looks like. It seems reasonable. This is where Brenner was living before he moved over to Lucin and squatted there near the grain shed, okay? So, if I just zoom on out a little bit, in terms of the angling, that can be explained due to the how the road appeared, okay? You remember when I said about the road in the previous image I presented to you? You can't quite make it out on here because it's all the vegetation in the way, but if we go down here, look at that vehicle. Once again, I know some people have already seen this, but to those who haven't, look at this vehicle. It looks like it's approaching Brenner's property when this satellite image was taken. The road does go all the way up to the trailer. So was this truck moving at the time? And who was behind the wheel? Is this Brenner's personal truck or was it a visitor like Don Hatley or Chase Fenstra? It's worth questioning. Additionally, because of the placement of the road in, if I can flip the image, can you see the depth of how it goes down? You know, the road. When you look back at the trailer and you refer back to the shot taken from the helicopter of Heavy D's footage, it was something like that from that angle. And I believe the helicopter was traveling southeast towards that way near to the border where the mountainous area is and where the mines are because I did see in Heavy D's video they did actually go up to here. They actually looked around as actual images of it as they're in this area. And they would have been going up and down these like roads on the side of the mountains trying to look for the mines. They didn't find Dylan in any of them up to now, but you get the idea. It was around this area where, where they were present, Lance, Ty, Heavy D and his crew. Damn trains. So we just move back down here. Okay. So you get the idea. Okay. And in terms of the road, which I'll refer back to, as you can see when you look back at the latest up-to-date shot of Jim's former place of living, his burnt down trailer, the road back there as it dips down where it's harder to see, that is where the vehicle was at in 2019, approaching the trailer. But, you know, it's not there now. So whether it was a visitor or Brenner himself, you could see the activity going on. And it's kind of interesting to observe that frozen in time years before Brenner supposedly did the unthinkable towards Dylan. Okay. You can let me know your thoughts. I mean, this is just like kind of random, but is there a possibility that, you know, as it dips down there, I mean, it's, it's a bit silly because if you've got a helicopter above, they're going to see you regardless, unless you're hidden in a tunnel or trees. Do you think the person that was driving towards the trailer noticed the helicopter flying over so they wanted to try and avoid being captured on camera possibly do you think that's a possibility or were they like oh i, I don't care i'm just gonna get on with my own business who cares who flies over just a little thought there but you know i'll just go back one more time so you, you can see before when uh, lance was there before the investigation by the police that's how it appeared 
and then after in recent time like within the last week or so this was captured okay let's move on to the next image now this one is of Dylan's place of living his farm as it's called now this photo is by Heavy D once again the timing of it was three months ago when Heavy D met up with Candice Cooley for the first time. I believe this is like towards the start of the whole investigation. Correct me if I'm wrong. It says three months. It doesn't give the exact like date, you know. I mean, you can work out yourself, but I'm shit with dates. So let's be realistic. Um, but when you're looking at it visually, this area, when you do compare it, and I don't need to because you've seen it before uh, earlier on. When you look at this compared to 2019, no trailer, not much going on. And I'm sure it still falls within the same time frame as when Dylan was working on the land. But then again, maybe in 2019, at that point when the satellite imaging was captured, maybe Dylan wasn't at the farm at the time. He was visiting uh, Justin Rounds, the dad, or Candice Cooley, the mother, or maybe stopping at Kurt's, you know, just visiting in a friendly way before people get triggered. Or he was elsewhere because, as I said, from what we've heard recently, Candice did say that Dylan wouldn't be there all the time on the farm. Um, if he needed to take a break, if wasn't able to do any farming because of the rain over the weekend, he would he would move around. He wouldn't just stay in one spot, and he'd be chasing other work as well in between. So that could explain to why this what you see on screen there is activity, not at, literally at the time, but the layout of it, Dylan present, but in twenty nineteen. There, was, there wasn't much going on because maybe it wasn't as developed or he was working elsewhere at the time. But less of that, more of this photo on screen. So this is three months ago. Quite a few of you would have seen it. Um, I'll just have a quick look at it myself, try and zoom on in. So, you know, you've got like a clearing, okay, so where vehicles are parked up and stationed. I think the ground probably reinforced, as what was said by Black Dove, to prevent vehicles from getting stuck into the ground. So there's been a few developments there. Down here appears to be a pond, but not the pond, Lucin Pond, as I got confused previously in the past, but it's some kind of pond, okay. Water level is fairly low, it looks pretty dried up. Near to it, there is some kind of blue piping. I don't know if that goes underground into the pond area for some kind of drainage or collection of water. Um, I believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the pond area nearby to where that pressure washer was found away from the truck, as you see up there. Now, when looking at that photo, you can't quite make out the, the pipes wrapped around the, the car where it was power washed. Um, but, you know, it's zoomed out. It's probably hard to see. But does it all check out uh, originally? Well, I guess so. You know, you've got the vehicles, a different range of them, like kind of tractor diggers, almost. Um, you've got a, like a tanker there, and it's an oil one or a gas one, some vent for storing stuff. More equipment and trailers scattered about. Pipes. Yeah. And then the vast land over that way. And obviously here, the main part, you got the two trailers, you got his Ford F-150 Raptor burgundy coloured colour, which the back window, which you probably can actually see here, you can actually see it smashed out at the back and that was caused by Candy's, or at least the friend, trying to get into the car even though they waited patiently for the keys to be able to start it. It's like, well, if you're going to wait for one thing, then why not wait for the other? Yeah. The trailers themselves, uh, the main one, what you see um, there in front of the red truck, that's where Dylan would stay at or at times might stay at. People did say, oh, there's no electricity. There's nothing like that, nothing going on. But in actual fact, there must be some form of electricity because there is a TV in there, almost like a flat screen TV, decent sized one. Okay. So, um, you know, if there's no electricity, it wouldn't make any sense to have a TV in the trailer if it 
can't be used. You know, you might as well just sell it for scrap or just not bother having it because, as Candy said, Dylan wasn't a material person and yet, you know, he's got a TV in there. You know, that's obviously to get rid of the boredom and stuff. But from what was also said and what we've seen previously with the trailer inside it being a complete mess, if you remember, things scattered about all over the place, um, partially explained, I guess, because of the weather, the dust and stuff blowing in, as we see with the grain shed. But moreover, it's just to do with Dylan being busy, okay? You know, he makes some food, makes some lunch or something, or gets a hot dog and then chucks, leaves the food on the side, so it kind of goes to waste. And I guess that's what happened on the 28th as well. I mean, could have been ambushed in that sense, but he could have also just made his food, left it on the side, left, went to the grain shed, and then bad things happened, and he, he didn't come back to be able to tidy up, possibly. But then again, he maybe he probably wouldn't have tidied up anyway, so that doesn't really matter. But yeah, that's what it looks like. That's why it appeared Dylan's place of living three months ago. I know some people will be thinking, so what, so what? It's to move on and now transition onto now. This is what it looks like now, okay? Like a, a week or so ago when Heavy D, I said, this photo is taken at the same time as that photo as we're flying over the border, okay? So when you look at this, there seems to be significantly more vegetation growing. Bear in mind, this is of a different angle, okay, compared to this one. But you can see on this photo, it's much more dusty looking. The actual ground, the terrain, much drier. And remember, take, take in mind that pond down there. You can see the, the outer part of it, the outer skirt of the pond where it was normally at that level, where it appears darker darker brown. Whereas when you compare it to this, look how much more full it is. You know, much more water there. And that can be explained probably because of, you know, the heavy rainfall and stuff, because I know people were talking about that around Dylan's disappearance. Can't remember what day, but it did rain. And I guess this is partially the cause of it. And obviously, you know, it has been a couple of months, like two, three months since Dylan went missing. So... There would have been rain in between, and that's why it's filled up more now. Um, that black stuff is basically what you see on the 2019 satellite images of where I was saying, where I, was, where I said, oh, look at all that black stuff. Is that supposed to be the trailer or something? But it wasn't. It's bin bags, okay? Same thing what you see at the grain shed around the back of it. So not much interest there. In terms of the surrounding area, um, just trying to take it all in at once, okay? Okay, so that's the trailers on the side of that pond near to the tractor. And where's the tractor? It, um, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I assume... It's hard to um, try and visualise. Where's the, where's the tanker at? Right, so the, the tanker is there. So the trailer should be kind of diagonal to it. So the trailer should be, I guess, here. Around this area, I, I assume. In this area. You can make out there is a washing machine there. And I believe that's the one what Dylan would use to wash his clothes in. Um, cause he, Candy said he would either use the hose pipe, either for the pressure washer on his car or for the washing machine, one or the other. Uh, I think I'm correct in the same. Things that remain, the odd tire, bit of scrap, bit of wood, and you got like, um, a water container there on its side from the looks of it. Um, you still got those metal, like, posts or poles, which probably been moved aside if... You know, things about to be taken out. You still got, you know, the trailers. That looks like some irrigation thing. You got a truck there, which looks like some kind of seed truck, but not the seed truck. 
I might be wrong, it's just because it looks like there's like um like a pipe sticking out the back of it and it looks like that's where it would spray out of if you're driving along. I might be wrong. And you've got many more. Look at all those metal um, bars or post poles. What are they used for? Or what would they have been used for? Is it piping or is it poles for structures, infrastructure? I'm not sure. Um, you know, you got the truck there with the trailer, some additional trailers which would be attached onto a tractor, as you just scattered about with the vegetation growing around it. Um, a few more pipes down there. These, these things are puddles. I'm not being, I'm not trying to act stupid, but you know, you, you might wonder what they are because it's at the angle. At the angle and the colouring of them, you can't quite see the reflection of the vegetation nearby. But yes, they're puddles, so it does shit like it must have rained in recent time. Um, the bin bags there, as I said. Some blue stuff there, I don't know what that is, near to the pond. Um, I think that's the piping, as I said, from the other angle, what we saw previous. you got the vastness in the background over there with the mountains I think that's the border but yeah so in terms of the main part here this is round about where the trailer should be but it's not there now in terms of the track marks yeah it looks like there is some but what probably happened is they moved things around to maybe take the the trailer out I guess go okay, you look over there around that tank and look how flooded it is. Look how wet the ground is. Compare that to this image down here. I mean, okay, there could be some wet patches still. It's hard to tell from the colouring and the, the quality. Hmm, maybe it's still wet. I don't know if you call it puddles or small ponds. But... It doesn't look as wet here compared to um, this one. You see what I'm saying? This looks a bit more wet. And it must be for that to be, or for that to appear looking more full compared to the previous image, what we've seen. As for this equipment, I just want to see, has it moved or is it still in the same position? Got to take in mind, it's, it's different camera angles. You remember the whole situation with Jim Brenner's burnt down trailer and looking at the shovels, how when Lance went there the second time around and, and he said certain shovels have been moved, but it was like, have they or haven't they? Because when comparing the footage, um, it, they were looking at it different ways. One was from the side and another one was from the front, so it was harder to kind of make out in a way, or at least from my point of view. But looking at those vehicles there, you know, the, the, the green tractor, which is probably John Deere, and the yellow one, and the, the red one. Let me know in the chat, have they moved since back then, three months ago? Down here. I would, I would say so, to be fair. To be fair, I'd say so. The, the obvious one, yeah. This tractor here if I'm correct in saying, can you see that small green tractor, that one is there, and yet on the most recent footage, it's kind of closer? Or am I, am I getting confused? It looks closer, and where's that other... Oh, okay, so, hmm. Well, that down there, that's been moved, because that is that there. Hmm. It's the vegetation as well. That's what can cause confusion, for me at least. Maybe it wasn't moved, but one thing that's no longer there is that red tractor, which seems to be attached to it. Because when you look back, where's the tractor? It's not there, is it? It's not in front, it's not in back, it's not behind. Where's it gone? 
it's not it's not up here so it's been taken away that red tractor there should be here but it's not the truck that one with the little trailer in front of it hasn't moved from the looks of it because it's there parts up on the side hopefully that makes sense bear in mind it's different camera angles anything else that down there wait hold on wait 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 oh, oh wow Okay, you see that truck there with the trailer? Just behind that yellow digger? That is that. Same thing. But that yellow digger isn't there. The yellow digger was there three months ago. Fast forward to now, it's disappeared. Where has it gone? I think I know where it is. Let me refer back to Salty Pancakes footage. So here we are, a screenshot of Salty Pancakes video, his visit to Dylan's grain shed. And this was one month ago, okay? So as you can see, he's coming in from a different way. You can see the grain shed in the distance to the right, which is out of sight from this angle, we move on. On the right-hand side, you've got this digger, a yellow one. And from the looks of it, that looks identical to uh, that. You see that digger there? You know, it's got the the digger on the back of it, you got the tractor, and then at the front you got the, the shovel thing, the, the scooper, if you call it that. So that, which was three months ago, was moved to here. So that's like two months on, right? What's it doing here though? Now, originally, we were under the idea that this was here for a while because you look at the tire it's a flat tire it's sunken it's not been looked after it's been abandoned almost the stabilizers as well are out as you can see you look down here the actual scoop of the digger is muddied from i assume the ground back there possibly so it it's been used to excavate the land. And now we know the the dating of it, this being present one month ago, in which, where it was originally at, Dylan's place of living, which this captured three months ago, as seen here. Someone's gotten into the vehicle and driven it, to the grain shed, as you see there. But who would do that and why? Why would they need to drive it up there? Does anyone know? I mean, maybe there's a simple explanation, but I've not heard of it yet. You know, why do they need to move equipment around? Is it because to keep, is it to carry on with the farming? Or was this like digger used to help in the police investigation possibly? Digging up the land, maybe. Unearthing things to see if there's any evidence. You know, they might have used um, the farming resources, the police. If any of you know, please let me know down below in the chat or comment section because it's interesting to see things being moved around because I know we've heard about the grain truck. We've heard about Dylan's Ford F-150. We've heard about Brenner's trailer, Dylan's trailer, then been taken away at a point in time but nothing was mentioned about this yellow digger 
and it clearly has been used for digging up ground. As you see there, it's muddied on the side, and here, muddied. And yet within that space, that time period, what, what, like two months, of it going from Dylan's place of living to the grain shed, it's now got a flat tyre. Interesting. And to reinforce that point, to back things up, if we just, just briefly skip on to the grain shed, this is from Heavy D, okay? Three months ago, as I said, we zoom on in, past the grain shed, down this area, the ground looks fairly flat, and by the side of it, nothing is parked up. Move on to now, which was about a week ago. Look, that's there, parked up. That is that. That was originally at Dylan's place of living. But as we've seen in recent time, it's no longer there because it's here and it's captured by pancakes one month ago and it's reinforced by Heavy D a week ago. So who used it? That's the question. Just wanted to share that with you. Now we will refer back to the grain shed shortly. Just want to finish off here, okay? The present time, one week ago footage screenshot by Heavy D, okay? So, you might be wondering, what about the trailers, if I've not mentioned it before? Where are they? There was originally two, as we know. These two here. Where are they? Where's the vehicle? Well, from what I know of, at least, Dylan's Ford F-150 Burgundy Raptor was originally allowed to be taken away by either the friend or the parents when they broke access, broke entry to gain access, to be able to drive it away. At some point, it would have been analysed, you know, taken into the labs, but supposedly not much was found from the looks of it. In terms of the trailers, um, I don't know what point they were taken away because you've got to take in mind, you know, um, was it in June or July when uh, Kurt made that call? I think... Hmm... Was it the 30 of or something? I can't remember. I'm not going to go too far. But that time when Kurt, Kurt made that call to the psychic. No, Kurt received a call from the psychic and then called Candice about it. And then they all went down to Montello with the police. And then the key fob returned on the same exact day. So trailer was still present then. So it was after that. And then it was taken away. And I assume it's not been returned back. It's held somewhere. If any of you know where, feel free to let me know. I would say it's probably held by the police, right? Or it's been taken back in, I guess. Because it's not here, so it's got to be somewhere else. As for Dylan's vehicle, that could be with one of the family members. Um, I know they took it originally, but I'm sure it would have been taken to the labs at a point and then handed back. I know certain equipment items might have been passed on, given to other people, like with what Candy said recently with the fuel tank which was found in the back of Dylan's truck that was given to Don Hatley for his farming and stuff. So, uh, yeah. Just to throw in a little point on the spot from what was said in the last video in the discussion section, Black Dove did mention but from hearing what either like Jim Terry had said or on Pancake's stream, one or the other, that um, Don Hatley at some point was threatening Justin Rounds, the father of Dylan Rounds, with a shovel. Why? I mean, from like how we've interpreted things, you know, Justin Rounds has been quite calm, laid back, relaxed, but... It looks like he could hold some kind of anger or frustration within because of like the whole case and how it's gone. And then someone like Don Hatley, who we've not seen too much of. I'm showing you the odd image or in one of my thumbnails. You know, he's kind of fat. He's, he's, he's fairly old and he's got like a beard. A bit like Brenner, but probably older. 
and yet, you know, he seemed to get quite aggressive verbally, as what Candy said in that recent interview of Doug's, you know. Um, Don Hatley must have been with the farming and saying, oh, I've got to do it all, and uh, with or without Dylan, and he's getting really frustrated. So he doesn't seem like a calm individual. Seems a little bit unpredictable how they can, he can just suddenly change in behaviour, a bit volatile maybe. And Candy saw that firsthand verbally, just in rounds, almost saw it physically firsthand when he was supposedly holding that shovel. Now, I don't know if it's 100% confirmed or true, but that's what was said, just relaying it. I mean, from interpreting it, it wouldn't be a surprise if it happened because if Don Hatley has already got aggressive verbally, then physically he might be able to do the same thing. So it does make you think, why is he getting aggressive? aggressive what's the whole reason for it is it necessary or not and so on but yeah you get the idea of this location about a week ago compared to the same location which was three months ago okay i don't think anything else has been moved around i mean now we know that that yellow digger tractor is at Dylan's grain shed, whoever moved it and for what reason. In terms of this red tractor, which is in good condition and a decent sized one, I don't know where that's at. Is there a point that could be put across that maybe it's one of these? I'm not too sure because they look white and not red, but possibly, you never know, maybe you might be able to see it in one of the other screenshots. But you get the idea, don't you? Let's move on to Dylan's grain shed now. So as I said, this was by Heavy D in his helicopter three months ago, okay, when he went for the first time. And when you look at the, the area itself, okay, I know we've seen it, but I'll just briefly go over it. You got like a water container there stood up, okay. You got, what do you call it, an RV trailer, camper van, something like that because it's on wheels and it is mobile. Now, I don't know whose is that, if any of you know. I know um, Brenner had a trailer, but I'm not quite sure which one it is, because there's a couple of different vehicles. And a couple of different cars as well. Got a truck there. Mini tractor, from the looks of it. You got like the black bin bags over that way caught up in the vegetation, as you can see. That looks like one of those rollers, I think. Well, actually, that looks like it's... The, the front of it looks like it's one of those. I don't know. It's one of those spare parts. I don't know. It looks like one of those rollers where you flatten ground down, like tarmac. Um, you got the grain shed there as it appears. Not much going on. You got those like small, I don't know what you call them, barrels or tanks. Yeah, I, I think you'd call it tanks because they were still present in Salty Pancakes footage. Down at like that strip, no tractor, as I said. The ground itself, I don't know, it doesn't look disturbed. But then again, it's the angling and the colour tone can be deceiving. You've got a big tank there. On the other side, it's kind of sparse. That there, which is visible in the Salty Pancakes one, along with the tractor there. So they're still present. Now, if any of you know, because I'm not for definite, I can is Jim Brenner's trailer currently here? I sense it could be. I might be wrong, but I sense it could be. And the reason why I say that is because I'm sure that in this footage, when Heavy D was there talking to Candice for the first time, Candice was saying, oh yeah, Brenner's over that way, over that way across the, the mountain. Or was that to do with his original trailer in Montello? I can't remember. But the way she was wording it, she was like saying, oh yeah, Brenner, he's just over there, the grumpy old man in his trailer. 
and that was three months ago which is seen here so is the trailer visible on this screen because I've never seen Brenner's trailer properly I mean I saw a trailer uh, like an RV trailer in 2019 okay but I don't know whose that was whether it was Brenner's or most likely Dylan's I can imagine Dylan yeah it was Dylan's must have been closer to the grain shed at the time, but then wouldn't that mean Dylan was squatting then? Oh, ah, didn't think about that. That's weird because in 2019, Brenner was still in Montello at that trailer. So Dylan would have been at his farm, but at his farm there was no trailer, only a trailer at the grain shed. So that must have been Dylan's then, because who else could it be? Don? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. But, you know, you got that like motorhome camper van style thing uh, where you'd live in and you can drive around it well drive inside obviously <laughs> I don't know whose it is and then that is that I don't know it yeah that does look like another trailer I don't know if it's Brenner's you get the idea I mean mm, whatever or whoever at some point, Brenner's trailer was taken away to be inspected. Probably would have been around the time of when Dylan, not Dylan, when Brenner was arrested properly and sent to jail. Okay. I mean, if he was released and they took his trailer, he would have just been like, you know, he wouldn't have had anywhere to really live or stay in, I guess. But that aside, one thing for certain, let's move on to the main focus. As we know, that is the grain truck. And to be fair, although it's been played down, it is a fair-sized truck, to be fair. And basically, it would be reversed into that shed. The front of it would be sticking out because it's long. But the main part, the seeds, would be covered and protected in the shed. Dylan was successful in doing that. Now, you might wonder, well, what's it doing parked on the outside? Who did that? Oh, it's probably the police when they were in there investigating. Nope, because as we've heard recently, to those who might not be aware, Candice did state in an interview by Doug that on June the 2nd, which was classified as a spring cleaning, in quotation marks, James Brenner, also known as Jim Brenner, was present on this land on 2nd of June, and he went into the grain shed and he drove the grain truck out this and left it there. And he didn't reverse back and he just left it there as we see captured now. And that all happened whilst the LE Box Elder County were present, sat around and watching him do that. So you got a crime scene, you got important evidence and vehicles which would have been used by Dylan or maybe somebody else at the time and the police who are there who should be making sure no one disrupts or disturbs the evidence allows Brenner to just walk on in move the grain truck uh, put his hand prints on the wheel on on the gear stick on the door handles where Dylan might have touched it and it would have ruined it and yet the police were fine with that so it does make you think and it also makes you think what was taken out of the grain shed. Any items of interest, any evidence, maybe we'll never know. And where did it go? So, original image, and that was three months ago. Fast forward to present time, like a week ago, as I said. Slightly different angle, much darker, that's just because of the weather. And when we zoom in, we can try and compare what's there now and what's, what's gone. So, that has appeared, as we said before. That wasn't there three months ago. Three months ago, it didn't exist. It was at Dylan's place of living. So that's changed, okay? We look here, that, like, irrigation, like, machine for spraying, that's present, and so is that tractor. We're we refer back from the looks of it it's not moved I guess no it's not moved it's as it is okay 
anything else going on. Well, when we zoom in here, you've got some kind of generator, the yellow one there. You've got the piping or hose scattered about, and then a portaloo on the outside. Was that there back then? Yes, you've got the generator, you've got the piping, and the portaloo was stood up. But now, in present time, which we also saw a month ago in Salty Pancakes' video as the middleman, it was knocked over. It's not the end of the world. Most likely the wind blew it, probably, if, it's, if there's nothing inside of it to weigh it down. So that can be explained fairly easily. But, as we know, main thing is, the grain truck should be parked outside, or at least inside. It's not inside, it's empty. And we saw that with Salty Pancakes video one month ago. And additionally, we didn't see the grain truck then. And as we see now, we don't see it because it was taken away. Now, depending what you know, at one point, it was taken in originally, I believe. It was taken in, it was assessed, like checked for the lab's data, DNA, all that evidence and stuff. But before they processed it, they just said to the parents, yeah, you can take it back home now and do whatever you want with it. Go on. And so they did, the parents. I don't know if it's at Justin's place or Candy's place, but it was taken somewhere by the family. And then after that, I'm not sure. I know in recent time on a Facebook post, Candy said certain items are going to be taken in, evidence, and be reassessed just to check if anything's been missing, overlooked, and so on. So maybe that could include the grain truck. As we see on here, in recent time, as well as a month ago, it was taken away. So just to prove it, just to let you know what it looks like now, at least. If we look in this area, referring back, okay, these two cars here, okay, are those there, as you can see. Now, this vehicle is behind them, and you can't quite see them because it's back there. That's a shame. But I assume it's probably been taken away, possibly. Um, you've still got that, that roller. Yes, it's definitely a roller from that angle for flattening the ground. That's still present. Those objects are still present. Uh, the bin bags are still present, I guess. That back then, the tanker is still present with the water container. What about these two vehicles here, that grey one and the white one? Were they there originally? Yes. They're just there, which is obstructed by what looks to be a trailer. That could well be Jim Brenner's trailer. I'm not 100% certain. You might be kicking, screaming in the comments. Well, you can. But it must be. It must be Jim's trailer. It just looked a bit small, but I guess you get different sizes. So with that not being there in recent time, and assume it wasn't in Pancakes, I can't remember the angling of it because Pancakes deleted this video, so it's you can't, hard to refer back to, but I'm sure it wasn't. So it's taken away. Okay, so probably Brenner's, right? Checking for evidence. Um, it wouldn't have been released if it actually okay, if it was released, they didn't find any evidence, nothing of interest. Would they have returned it back to the farm, or would they have just scrapped it? What What do you think? I mean, if it's a personal vehicle, someone owns it, and it's um a family member, a friend, the victim, whoever, and they're present to collect it, they'll they'll obviously receive it back. But if you're a criminal, and one of your possessions has been taken away and analysed, and you're still in prison, what happens to it? Does it get given to you? Well, you? well, it can't really, can it? Because you're in prison. But does it get placed back somewhere? Or is it like a, a impounded? Is that the correct word? And it's hot. It's like held somewhere, locked up. And then you've got to pay a certain fee to be able to get it back. Or am I just thinking of GTA, GTA 5 where your vehicle gets blown up or something or you get arrested and then you got to buy it back? Maybe. But you can clearly see that certain vehicles, the grain truck that RV trailer have been taken away 
which you would expect, and it does tie in line with what's been said in terms of like the interviews by Candice. Is that it of the images? Yes. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that and it made sense. I know people have been talking about timelines and stuff. I wanted to, for now at least, negotiate and do a visual timeline of the environment and important places of interest, okay? Hopefully that was demonstrated here. So like the likes of Brenner's trailer way before in kind of recent time and then most recent, if that's the correct language, okay, 2019, what was it like, several months, uh, like a month or two ago and then a week ago, okay, the swamp area as well, just showing you what it looks like, how it looks like now, supposedly, grain shed, Dylan's farm, all that, you can leave your thoughts down below, if you have additional points or questions, feel free. But I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.